Good evening. The school board meeting of Tuesday, November 9th, 1993 is now called to order. The first item on the agenda is to welcome our new school board member, Carla Bernstein, who was sworn in last night. So it's great to have you aboard. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is adjustments to agenda. Are there any adjustments? I just want to note Fine. that we, I do have to add a co-curricular piece, um, which I will simply add to the list when I get to it. Okay. Okay, the next item is approval of school board minutes from the meeting of October 12, 1993. Are there any corrections? Okay. No, Charlie? <laughs> no, Rosemary. No. <laughs> no Rosemary. Okay, the minutes stand approved. The next item is comments by the high school representative. Is he here tonight? Not here? Okay. Middle school representatives? Hi, um, I'm Nina Henriksen. And I'm Lindsay White. And um, in the last month, we've been um, basically just talking about um, the dances and the socials. And our first dance was the 29th of October. And we had a new DJ. But um, the next dance, which will be December 10th, we're going to change our DJ back to our old DJ because um, the students didn't really <laughs> like the new DJ. And um, our first social is coming up soon. It will be on November 19th, and it's going to be in the high school. And we need two teacher chaperones, and we'll have a lifeguard at the pool. And um, there will be a movie playing in the cafeteria, I guess, and it will be Homeward Bound, and there will be swimming and a lot of activities for the kids to do. And that's all that we've been really talking about. And are there any questions? Anything? Any questions? No? Oh, Rosemary? I have a question. I would just like to know if the students reacted to the fact that the school bond referendum passed last week. Has there been any discussion by the students? Um, no, no, not really. No? Not you just <laughs> thought it would go through, they right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Okay, the next item on the agenda is communications. Are there any communications? No. no. Anybody else? No? Okay. <laughs> the next item is superintendent's report. We'll start with the results of the recent school bond referendum, and we're all smiling tonight. Bonnie, do you have anything you want to say about that? Yeah, I think I sincerely want to thank the community. Um, it is a relief to know that we will be able to take charge of our problems rather than having our problems um, basically take charge of us. I certainly appreciate the fact that it was a difficult decision to make, and I also appreciate the fact that many people did not feel that they could vote for um, the proposed solution. Uh, I sincerely hope that as we move forward with this, that the community will become more and more aware of the uh, soundness of this decision. I think sometimes we go through those difficult decision-making processes and um, uh, can get kind of divided opinion, but I've been impressed with the phone calls I've had from people who have said, you know, um, it was a tough decision, but we, we certainly want to work together, and, and that's certainly the way I feel, and I'm sure the staff, and obviously the board can speak for itself. Um, but thank you. Uh, I think it was a, um, a really, really good moment for the town, and we look forward to getting it done. I also want to comment that in the course of talking to a lot of people about this, I am well aware that there are anxieties about how well we're running the uh, maintenance department, how well we're running preventive maintenance, how well we can control that, systematize it so that um, with the uh, newly refurbished buildings that we will not uh, slide uh, into uh, less efficient pathways. I am convinced we can do that. Uh, not only am I convinced that we're uh, at Made, we have made improvements, but I am absolutely convinced that we can keep that up. But I certainly would want to acknowledge that I heard loud and clear that message from many townspeople that I spoke to. Um, not only is it important for us to have better facilities, but we also understand that it is part of our business to maintain them, and we will do that. Thank you. Okay. 
I also, excuse me, <laughs> excuse me. I, I just also not only want to thank the community, but I think there are a lot of people who worked very hard in volunteer ways to um, support this, and uh, sincerely thank you. Um, the list is too long, really, and I don't know the names of everybody that was involved in neighborhood communication, but I think it was a grassroots effort, uh, and we sincerely appreciate it. Charlie. As, as one of the board representatives to that committee, I would like to recognize both Rosemary and Beth's efforts. They put in a lot of time on telephones and putting out materials and putting up signs, and I would just like to recognize them for their help. Thank you. Thank you. Mark? In the same line, I would also just like to thank the two formal leaders of the project in terms from the school standpoint. Ann Chapman and uh, Dr. Connie Goldman. The, the amount of work they put in was above and beyond anything that could have possibly been asked for, and the contributions to the education for the town of Cape Elizabeth for the next decades will, will be greatly impacted by their efforts. I'm personally very grateful for all the time they put into it. Uh, well, I'd like to just th say thank you to all the people in the schools, also the administrators <coughs> who came on the tours and um, the teachers who helped us out with this. It was, uh, it was a great effort, and now the fun part begins, really planning these buildings. This will be, be really exciting. So this is still your report, Connie, so oh. middle school <laughs> athletic report. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, when we get to the building committee, we'll talk a little more about the process that we'll be using for moving forward. But I'd like to go on and uh, we have seen Andy Stroud here this evening, um, an assistant uh, uh, director for athletics at the middle school. Uh, he did, in fact, um, give me a report which I've included in your packet, and it summarizes the activities at the middle school. I gave you not only some dollar figures, but also some summaries. Um, perhaps we can, I don't know if you have specific questions of Andy, uh, or would you like, uh, I think it would be wise for him to give you a, a little, why don't you highlight for us the pieces of this that you want us to make particularly pay attention to? Well, I, th I think the biggest thing is, if you look at it, you just see the, the number of participants that we have uh, throughout all the activities that we offer in the middle school. Um, and if, if you look at our numbers, we have, you know, it, it, it's hard to tell. It's just 489 total uh, students that participated, uh, but some people participated in more than one activity. But uh, it just shows that, that we have a, an outstanding number of kids that are always participating in everything. And, and we try and keep the dollar value down um, as much as we can, and, and I think that came out fairly, fairly well. Next year's uh, report will be even more in depth. Um, this is the first year that we've ever given this report. Um, and we've more or less streamlined it with the high school, the way the high school gives their reports. As you see, we don't have any uh, equipment repair, equipment replacement, or additional equipment. Um, everything's under supplies, and that's exactly how it was done when I came on board. And, and now uh, Mr. Weatherby and I have, have kind of joined hands and, and we'll be having a, a more in-depth um, report for you uh, next year. Um, are there any questions on what you see there that I can ask? Charlie. No question, Charlie. just a comment, and yep. I thank you because I believe this was my request, and I thank you very much. Actually, it was a lot of fun to do because it gave me an opportunity to sit down and really put everything in, on, on paper and, and see where everything is going. Um, I really enjoyed doing it, so I'm excited to, to do it again next year. Rosemary. Thank you. Oh, really? Um, yes, Annie, I just have a comment sure. as well, not a question. I, first of all, I, I do think it's very important for us to see this, so I thank you very mm -hmm. much. And it really does graphically show the level of participation of the middle school students, and I think that that's very important, especially as it dovetails with the middle school philosophy. And I'm very excited about um, when you have a need for additional staff um, that you present a case. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, work that well in there and it looks like you've done some creative problem solving. <laughs> We're <With> trying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? 
Just a oh, comment. Yeah. Congratulations okay. on oh, thank you very your much. great win and what I was not at the game, but I saw the clips on TV and they were exciting. But um, also the sportsmanship I understand was outstanding at this game. Well there's such a mutual respect for both programs. Everyone's played together for so much for for so long. And you know, it's no one's a loser when you come out of that mm -hmm. game. And it, and I was very, very proud of my kids. They they were fantastic. Both on and off the field after that. And a lot of fun and very, very nice to be a part of that. Good job. Thanks. Thank you, Andy. Also, um, we seem to be zipping along. Today. We certainly do. No reason to slow down. <laughs> <laughs> right on going. Um, I have listed uh, and put into the packet uh, some uh, of the minutes of uh, the total quality meetings that have been going on, and I'll just uh, cover three in specifics. They're sort of in your packet, but just for everybody's information. The most um, organized effort we have going is the ongoing effort for support services. Um, we have this year uh, regular bi-monthly meetings of the people who are in charge of the support services. Uh, which includes maintenance, custodial, cafeteria, as well as the business office. Um, so whether it be uh, from not only representing community services, but also her um, interface with the uh, support services in general uh, and transportation. Um, we have committed ourselves, as I think I told you earlier, to putting out a handbook. Um, and uh, our most recent meetings have really given us a good skeleton on that. It sounds like an easy project, uh, simply listing the services, who's in charge, how do you access them. But we are finding that they are, um, each piece of this puzzle is sharpening our awareness of what in total quality terms you simply call, I guess, uh, flow charts, how you get it done. Um, we're also, as we do that, seeing ways to improve it. Um, there are two other groups that have not been meeting as long. One just started and one has been has had several meetings. Um, one of those is, a, what I guess we're calling a cafeteria study group, which is a uh, group that Nancy St. John is heading up at Pond Cove. Um, it's in response originally to parent concerns about uh, the cafeteria behavior uh, in the lunch period in general uh, for the children at Pond Cove. Uh, I have sat in on a couple of those meetings and I find them fascinating to see the learning that's going on, not only learning about uh, what, again, total quality calls benchmarking, going out and looking at other sites and figuring out what they're doing that might work for us, uh, but also the learning that uh, parents and staff are uh, sharing with each other, getting a bigger picture of what, in fact, are the complications. I mean, why is it important to have uh, youngsters arrive at the lunchroom on time? and are there different ways in which we could uh, set up the serving of trays and so on? All of that sounds very Mickey Mouse, but when you get into an analysis of how we're doing it, it's amazing how important it is and how many frustrations can be dealt with by looking at those things in an orderly step-by-step -step process. We expect to have, um, particularly in this uh, group, a series of recommendations. Some of it will be actually changing the way in which we are doing things in the cafeteria. Some of it will be behavioral expectations. We appreciate the input from the parents who've been working, and we certainly will be sharing with the entire staff, uh, and you'll have an opportunity to see that. And we have another small group at the fifth grade that is actually beginning to tackle the uh, parent survey for conferences, an issue we've talked about before. Their um, focus right now is to collect data, to consider various ways in which we might make some changes there. Uh, their intent is not to make the change this year, but to prepare thoroughly so that the change can be for next year. We're looking forward to seeing how, um, what recommendations they come out with. We have had some other conversations with a couple of other groups that haven't really formed into uh, problem solving, but we'll keep you informed, and I'm very hopeful that we're actually making some progress. Any questions of Connie? Okay, moving on to unfinished business. The first is update on ADA work included in current budget. Connie, are we going to go through the subcommittees? Oh, I skipped right over the subcommittees. Excuse me. Is zipping through. Oh dear, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, the first is the finance subcommittee. Peter, sorry. I'm willing to skip it. I, I know. Uh, 
the Finance Committee held its uh, routine monthly meeting at 6.30 uh, today, and I stress the word routine, uh, so much so that in this meeting I suggested to my colleagues that perhaps when there was nothing in particular to report, we could just leave this off the agenda, but they were persuaded that uh, you, the public, uh, and other board members want to know that the Finance Committee is meeting and uh, that uh, indeed there are no major problems uh, to report. Uh, tonight was a typical meeting. We reviewed the appropriation report, the uh, lunch uh, budget. Uh, we discussed disposing of some assets that we weren't using, uh, computer equipment, uh, and our financial controls and management systems. We also uh, discussed and approved increasing uh, from uh, five to eight hours a day, one of the clerical positions, uh, in large part to, to accommodate the need for uh, tighter financial controls and, uh, and management information systems uh, as we move closer to a, uh, I think what uh, is called the one town concept, the, uh, the school board and the, uh, the town consolidating its accounting and payroll systems. And we're making good progress in that area. So that is my routine report. Are there any questions? The two of you who were not there at the <laughs> Finance Committee meeting tonight. No? Okay. Moving on to the Policy Subcommittee now. I know the Chair was not there, Mark. The Policy Where? Committee met and reviewed several uh, policies that are currently in existence. Uh, some of we have returned to administration for further input uh, prior to presenting them to the Board for first readings. We anticipate that we should be able to finish the initial run through the policy manual within the next one to two months and then go back to revisit areas that are going to need considerably more time uh, with input from met, uh, administration, uh, from parents and other school board members. We currently have two items before us, the equal education opportunities policy and the student attendance and truancy policy. Both of these are just for a first reading. And uh, we would invite any comment now or comment later to uh, any member of the policy subcommittee to, if you have any questions or concerns about those. No? Okay. I would note that now that we're doing this, it's not on right, but the I, agenda. Right, but th that's what I'm going to clarify. <laughs> um, one of the things that is still, I mean, I guess, and I think I would ask for some direction from the board. Uh, as I look back over the way we've handled these in the past, these two uh, policies uh, have been reread by the policy subcommittee. No comment, no changes, they, and they are but, uh, both adopted policies. We've handled this two ways. One is to bring in to the full board the comment that we're not recommending any changes in these and let it stand at that with a notation that they've been reviewed, no comment. If there are changes, then we need to have the second reading. Um, and that is probably the most efficient way to deal with it. We have also, I will admit, included these along with others with very minimal changes and given them a second reading. But there isn't any real reason um, if, uh, for instance, both of these I have no reason to change them, and if the board has none and the administrators have seen them have none, uh, I would be comfortable with advising you simply to note that review, uh, and uh, unless there are some other comments that occur to anybody, we will simply note it as review it and put it back in the policy book. Okay. I, I would have one comment about the equal educational opportunities. Okay. One. What, what is really the purpose of this policy? to make sure that kids with, with particular needs are getting their educational uh, needs met in the system. I mean, it's just not clear to me what the, fo what the focus of, of this is. Well, I think it is a recommended, I mean, this happens to be, we have some policies that come to us with a recommended new language. That is, um, when we had our review um, two summers ago, from the MSMA, they added policies that we didn't have. This is one that it is a recommended policy to have in your book to simply make an explicit statement that you are, in fact, uh, interested in having equal education opportunities. Now, I will admit that once you've said that and made a kind of general statement of purpose, you can look at it and wonder, uh, well, are we supposed to say more or less? We have other policies 
that, uh, for instance, there's a cross -re reference here to AC, the non-discrimination policy. I mean, is it a redundancy? Um, I well, can't. That, what, what, what I'm wondering, the reason I say that is because in light of our uh, mission and vision statement, right. I wonder if, the, and we're talking about less is more and all these kinds of things. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could read, I could, I could see somebody reading this and saying, well, then, you know, I don't think my kids' needs are being met and we need to construct a curriculum just for my child. I mean, by the reading of this, it's so vague. If, it's ta if, it's, if it is talking about non-discrimination, that's one thing, but that's not really clear if you just read this as a uh, discrete piece of paper. Mm. I didn't mean to cause it. I have, I have an uncomfortable there. feeling. This is one of those iceberg <laughs> issues that there's a... Um, it, it is certainly, um, it is certainly true that you could, I guess the confusion would be whether you interpret the phrase basic and unique educational opportunities as a program or whether that is simply the recognition as a philosophical statement on the part of this particular school board that you do believe that each child should be seen as a person and we will do our best to meet their individual needs. I, th I feel comfortable that statement, even while I do understand that it's arguable how you do that. Um, the, am I just opening up something? That no, no I don't think there's anything opening up that doesn't exist. A lot of these are come per recommendations of the Maine School Board Association, mm -hmm. and language is mm -hmm. set to to address oftentimes uh, instances that have been brought about by case law and so policies are adapted to right. to, to address those specifically and I, I think this just sets a direction for those situations where you will have students who require special needs and that they, they will be addressed in, in specific language and policy so although it's not very directed I think it does serve a purpose in outlining our approach to special needs yeah, I would agree if it means special needs, but I'm just saying this is so general and it does not have a legal reference, which I think most of them do um, when, when we are addressing something that we're, we're supposed to be doing by statute. But um, it does say basic and unique educational opportunities that exist within the school programs. It's not saying that we would add. Okay, well, well I, I must say, I, I, I wasn't going to comment on it if, if nobody else did. I didn't understand it at all. <laughs> and I read it a couple of times, and I said, maybe it means this. But on the other hand, mm -hmm. maybe it means that. But the thing that struck me about it was, uh, reading it with no background, is it seemed to say that at least annually, all parents be provided with a clear and complete description of two things, basic educational opportunities, and unique educational opportunities. Well, my question is, are we complying with that? That may be one of those um, well-meaning statements <coughs> that, let's see, this, this policy was originally adopted in 88, and I don't have the, any kind of information on why or what <coughs> the, you know, as often happens when you're looking at former Charlie. Oh, you know, I, I think there was a move about that time to, to look into tracking and becoming a non-tracked system. There were board members on board then who were really looking for non, into a non-tracking mode, and, and I have a feeling that may have come out of that. Hmm. I, I just want to make sure we're, we don't have policies in here that we're not backing up. I mean, the, the point to me of the policy book is not just to keep rubber stamping old policies, but to say, does this policy make sense to us now um, to have it? I mean, obviously, we need to cover non-discrimination and, and those kinds of things, mm -hmm. but I think we do elsewhere in the book. And this, to me, seems to open up, could potentially, I mean, somebody yes. could look at it and um, run with it. Well, certainly if you took the third paragraph, which, which I have no idea what that means, that somehow differentiating between basic and unique educational opportunities which are offered at the direction of the supervisory authority as opposed to what a given teacher may or may not do. I mean, why? What does that address? Mm. Mm -hmm. um, I think Rosemary had her yeah. hand up. Is this the missing right to fail policy? <clears throat> Is that what this means? 
This is unusual. <laughs> <laughs> I, never, I never would have thought of either tracking or right to fail, but I commend you for... Well, I'm looking at the time frame, I'm, is mm. quite frankly, yeah, and I'm looking yeah. at the yeah. March yeah. of 88. Yeah. Is what the big discussion and was and the fact that it's yeah. ambiguous to us yeah. today could present why it was ambiguous then. And quite frankly, I thought it was that we were required once a year to present a syllabus. So I'm way or off. Or a curriculum guide. Uh, or a curriculum guide. we don't guide. necessarily really do that. And again, I just don't think we should have a policy where we're not doing what we say or where we're not um, prepared to deliver on this. And I'm not really necessarily prepared to deliver on this <clears> if <throat> this means somebody wants to create a particular curriculum for the unique needs of their child. Not necessarily. You know, that's not necessarily what I would want to do. Carla, did you have something? Yeah, um, I have a question that's a lot for my own information here. And um, it was kind of prompted by what Charlie said with the sentence, educational opportunities that exist within the school programs. Aren't public schools obligated to add? Like what you said, this means we're not adding. Aren't public schools obligated to add in certain special needs cases? Or is oh, that incorrect? Oh, well, we have legal things we have to do, mm -hmm. clearly. So would that be something separate from this? This statement does not include those situations? Basically, there is a whole set of special education rules and regulations, some of which I've uh, asked uh, to have our own people review. But they're, they are part of the policy book right uh -huh. now. We're just reviewing to make sure we update them and they are consistent with changes in state law. Um, the more I read this, the more puzzled I become, too, I have to admit. <laughs> Uh, I thought I just simply accepted it on its face value as something that the board had looked at and put in with good intentions. Uh, my suggestion would be that with the issues that you're raising, um, I would like an opportunity to uh, just put this to one side and obviously consider this a first reading. <laughs> <laughs> See if I can track down, maybe some of the administrators can help me with uh, background on this and, and then I can understand a little better what because it does, now that I hear your comment, I, I begin to wonder about exactly what the intent behind this is. Um, and we'll come back with a recommendation. Because it does not look statutory, for instance, the next one, student attendance and truancy, it does have, you know, legal references. And I, and I do think we cover our, our special ed issues elsewhere. Yes, we do. So this seems to me to be something okay. different. We'll, we'll, we'll go over that one. I don't know. <laughs> That'll do it. Okay. Uh, the next is the building committee. Who would, who would like to speak to this? I, I would say first that we have a meeting of the building committee tomorrow night uh, at 7 o'clock in the superintendent's conference room. And it's basically uh, the agenda is to uh, set the project calendar um, for the next stage, talk about um, the architect selection, uh, talk, talk about topography and engineering, uh, work that needs to be done before winter sets in, um, and set up a, a meeting schedule. And I would like to stress, because this came up time and time again in the, uh, the work we did on the referendum, these are all public meetings, as have been all the meetings up to this point are all public meetings and we would love to have public input at these meetings. So we invite everybody to attend. Well, I'd like to address the uh, couple of issues that have to do with input. Uh, I know that there are many members of the staff who are very anxious to know when do I get a chance to talk about the shelves in my room or the storage room or what have you. Um, one of the things that we'll get to uh, all interested parties as soon as we can will be a, a timeline so that people know when they get a chance to meet with the architects. Um, I want to say that right off. Um, I also want to say that having been through a few contra uh, construction projects, I am extremely glad to be going into this one with the building committee that we have. I certainly hope nobody tells us that they've your schedule has changed and they're too busy to do it. We have um, a lot of work ahead of us. It is fascinating work. It is, it is, it really is absent the kind of emotional anxiety when you don't even know if you're going to have a project or not. But there is a lot of work. Um, and I'm really uh, pleased that this community has such an outstanding collection of people who are well qualified to be part of this project. Um, having said as much, we will be, uh, 
keeping the public informed through this meeting. We will keep reporting during the board meeting. I agree. We had a lot of comments from people who seemed to be unaware that these things were going on. And we'll try to um, use every means we can think of to let people understand the process as we go through it. Charlie, do you have anything to add? No? Okay. Yeah. Uh, the next item is unfinished business, as I said before. Update on ADA work included in current budget. I want to um, thank Dan Reed, uh, who really moved into this project um, last spring with a very uh, unclear list of things. Um, stayed with it with the uh, ADA committee, which is made up of town, school, personnel, um, and some parent volunteers. And uh, I'd like to clarify a little bit what this process is. Um, the ADA legislation has uh, required uh, having some process like a committee, not necessarily the committee as we have set it up, but some process like that that invites and allows a forum for community input. And we are talking about all public buildings as well as school buildings so that we do have a town and school committee. Uh, as part of the process last year, I put a uh, originally a sum of about $150,000 into our budget. We then pointed out that we probably wouldn't be able to use um, keep that in the budget at the full rate, but we could borrow some of it and put in uh, into the actual operating budget monies to um, to pay uh, the uh, first year's principal and interest and so on and so forth. I also at the same time was uncomfortable because we really didn't have a good list generated and there were two pieces to generating that list. One was to ask the committee process to come up with priorities one and priorities two and the other was to have our maintenance department give us estimated costs and we had to go into that process originally being pretty unclear what we could get for that kind of money. But as this has worked out, um, we kept 17000 in the budget, which was really intended to pay the cost of borrowing. But in addition, we received, um, an, what was it, an additional 89000 Where's Scott? Was it 89000 back? It was additional subsidy. Uh, and when that came through, we did uh, write a proposal to the town council that we would uh, share that and it was shared at the rate of uh, 62 for the school and 27 for the town to go forward with the ADA projects um, and see how far we could go. I'm happy to report, and I think that Dan uh, certainly deserves some credit here, that we have been able to complete uh, priority one and priority two items for that amount of money, and uh, they're not all quite finished yet, but uh, the 17,000 that's still in the budget will, um, should definitely finish that up. So uh, I also want to thank the town courier. The article on the ADA project was extremely timely. You'll notice in your packet, it was so complete. We just Xeroxed off so that you could have the list as is. In addition, uh, there are two or three other things that have either been finished or are about to be finished. One is a fairly major upgrade of the controls at the high school elevator. Uh, and I think you can see the, um, the pathways around the various schools, particularly the high school. Somebody had commented to me, uh, I think on election day, that there was, there was sort of a gully there beside some of those paths. Um, we apologize for that, but the loaming wasn't time to do it. Uh, however, that has been accomplished, and I think you'll find that, uh, I hope, every empty space now has been filled in. So, in effect, we have accomplished uh, what the priority one, priority two list is. We do not have to borrow any money. Um, we are grateful to share with the council uh, that successful completion of the first phase of our ADA program. Uh, I should point out that the second phase of that will be um, the committee is an ongoing group. Uh, we would expect that they would ask to have some uh, input into the referendum or the, uh, the school projects, obviously, uh, so that we can hear um, issues as seen from that group's perspective. Uh, and uh, through the regular budget process, we will be continuing our upgrade of the high school. Um, so I think that uh, a lot has been accomplished there. Um, I think that's basically it. 
John. I would just like to make one comment. When, when I did one of the open houses for the um, grades, um, some of the ADA committee members who I knew who they were took a lot of interest in where the, um, the access and the type of access were in the new build or proposed buildings. And so I'm sure we will be hearing from them when we get into that process. Yeah, we should point out though we've also we've already done quite a bit of work in that regard and mm -hmm. as far as how the new ramps would be constructed elevators in each building and taking care of those grade changes and there are an awful lot of grade changes um, already in the plan so any other comments no the next item is a vote to approve a three-year lease for a new bus now Connie if you want to explain <laughs> to do it here. Well, yes, the, we have some uh, language here from uh, council because the laws that govern um, leasing for a uh, nonprofit agency like a school where we would like to be able to comply with the IRS laws as well as uh, get the uh, maximum benefit of being a uh, nonprofit organization. Uh, what we've discovered in the last, uh, I guess, six months or so is that the rules now require the governing body, in this case the school board, to adopt a vote at public meeting um, with language that is specifically spelled out for you. And since it is a whole page, and just to give people a flavor of this, voted that under and pursuant to the provisions of Title 20A MRSA Sections 1001, 1055 the superintendent of schools being hereby is authorized to execute and deliver a tax exempt lease purchase agreement with associates commercial corporation the name and on behalf of the cape uh, elizabeth school department for a school bus etc etc that's only half of the first sentence and it goes on for a full page i so move <laughs> <laughs> i think it is perfectly acceptable our attorneys tell us that we must include this language in our minutes and we will do so however we will do so by you may make a motion to accept the language as presented to you um, in the agenda of, or, or excuse me in the memo of November 4 and then we will simply affix this to the minutes so that we have done I also have something that I will be signing and sending back in so that we will be totally in compliance I just want to note that I don't think there is a period in this whole page. Oh, okay. Glad I, yeah. <laughs> I didn't try to read the whole thing. That would have gone on for a long time. The Pro. <laughs> Remember that looking for the longest sentences yes. you could find? No, in I think this is it. That, that's an example. I think you found one. You're right. Mm. Well, do I hear a motion? I made a motion. Second. Okay, well, uh, well, then I said something. That, so. was, uh, that was the motion uh, in accordance with okay. MRSA uh, 5000 <laughs> as annotated and revised numerous times. I move we okay. buy the buses under a lease purchase agreement. Right. And Rosemary seconded. Any discussion? I do have a question. Um, in the cover letter from, the, from our law firm, mm. did they give you any indication what the couple of inconsistencies in the lease purchase documents were? Yes, it had to do with the fact, and it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, Scott, but I believe it was that um, the original lease document was a three-year um, note uh, with no payment the first year. In fact, we had put into this year's budget a payment, and so we needed to rewrite the document indicating that we would be paying sooner than later. That essentially the... That was the inconsistency. Any other questions? All in favor? Seven zero. Thank you. Okay, the next item is new business personnel request. The first is resignations. Honey. Yes, um, I we have received I have received two letters in since our last meeting. One of them is from Nina Miller, who has been our high school part time high school at the high school part time nurse at the high school. Got it right here. Um, she is leaving us to go back to graduate school full time and uh, would like, actually she will be effective, uh, her resignation effective uh, just prior to Christmas break. And the second letter from Mary Ellen Tracy, who has been with us I uh, think three years now, um, and has been teaching French at the middle school and has accepted a position at Moranicook, which is much closer to her home. She has been traveling 
um, a great deal. And she has, I've included their letters in your packet so that you will have a sense of uh, who they are and sorry to see them go. Madam Chair, I move we accept the resignations of Nina Miller and Mary Ellen Tracy. Second. Yeah. Any discussion? All in favor? 7 0. Madam Chair, I would just yes. like to comment on Mary Ellen Tracy. I think she's one of the lights of our PLUS program and she would be greatly missed. I've had two children who have had her for the last three years. Place and yes. Yeah. That's right. And nomination for athletic fee positions. Okay. Um, we have. Do you have a sheet with athletic positions for 93-94 with the addition that I noted at the very beginning of a co-curricular uh, position that, frankly, is noting the fact that Mary Ellen is leaving us and therefore. The team leader for the middle school language uh, position will, uh, we're substituting uh, Suzanne Janelle. Um, and in addition, you have on a yellow sheet that says additions for agenda item 9A, athletic fee positions. We're also adding a change from Mike Bartley to a shared coaching position of Mike Bartley and J.P. Whipple. This has to do with changes in people's uh, personal schedules. Uh, both will continue to do the same um, types of things, and both are qualified to do them. So the total list is eighth grade boys basketball, Roy Moore, assistant ice hockey shared position, Kevin Ken O'Quinn and David Labby, boys swimming, assistant to Carrie Curtis. Um, excuse me, boys swimming is Carrie Curtis and assistant John Byer. Girls swimming, Carrie Curtis and assistant Lexi Livingston and a shared position, seventh grade boys basketball and seventh and eighth grade B team boys basketball, Chris Carlisle and Bob Dahl. Charlie? I have a, a question of clarification on the swimming. We seem to have assistance to the, to the coach and then we also have assistant coaches. Can somebody explain? Well, my understanding on this one is that it's essentially diving. I don't know, um, and frankly, when we looked at our, our list, we were wondering why it isn't just called the diving coach, uh, because according to the information we have from uh, Keith Weatherby, that is essentially what they do. Um, Andy, am I on target on that one? Yes. Um, perhaps what we need to do is, in our review of athletic fee positions for the next budget year, we, we Clarify whether there is only diving or something in addition to diving, but that's this is their specialty. So would they be working as a team, or would one take on the girls and one take on the boys, or on the diving? Diving. This assistant swimming coach shared position. And those two just take on boys and girls diving. Okay. Rosemary, I was just wondering, can can we call them the diving coach? Well, what we have on our approved list is what you see here. Okay. Um, clarification that I received is that it's diving, and I can appreciate the, um, the need for getting that written down right, but that's the way it is right now. When your when you're athletic fee committee or whatever mm -hmm. meets again, which Peter. is once a year, <laughs> whoever well, our is. <laughs> Maybe he can I'll mark. Just to <laughs> okay. Rosemary? Uh, I'll move that we accept the nominations for the athletic uh, positions and the co curricular position as just read. I second the vote. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? 7 0. Okay, the next is a request for additional support for the Spanish program. I think we have a few, I don't know if the word aficionado is correct. Or not, but yeah. <laughs> People here in support. Um, we do have a, a memo um, outlining the general uh, issues, and um, we have looked at various possibilities. Um, it is certainly clear, I want to start by 
complimenting the entire group. We just all kinds of indicators that the BLESS program is turning out um, a, a real, or maybe a better way of putting it, is actually working. The, uh, the vision is becoming a reality. Uh, what was, it's really exciting to see a program that starts with a vision that I, I wasn't here when that started, but I, I certainly heard from people when I first uh, started three years ago uh, and saw that you had a clear vision and that you had real good plans as to how you were getting there. Uh, I, unfortunately, you may be the victims of your own success <laughs> that um, what we're seeing at the high school, of course, are more and more students uh, coming in with perhaps uh, more and more um, varied needs and how do we manage that. And right now, the memo makes it clear that uh, we have not only some very large classes, but we also have some, uh, uh, some kind of growing pains as far as exactly how we group them. Um, my original uh, conversation with, uh, with Rick uh, and with uh, Nancy was that perhaps we could work something out. Uh, we have to replace um, Wilma Miramontes, um, who resigned last year because her, last uh, month because her husband is moving. I thought perhaps if we hired a full-time person, we might be able to split some of that. It, a closer study, it looks like that would not be a particularly good um, possibility. The schedules just do not look like they're going to match. Uh, what I would like to suggest to the board right now is that we do not have a person to recommend. In fact, frankly, I uh, am concerned at the lack of response to our advertisements for the Spanish position. If anybody happens to be watching this who has uh, an interest in applying for the um, middle school Spanish position, we are looking for candidates. Um, and uh, I'm not sure what we're going to find out there for a, a one or two-fifths Spanish position at the high school, even if we can decide to go ahead. I mean, we really need some help here in finding <coughs> qualified people. Um, it just so happens right now that for whatever reason, we've had a few responses to our early ad for the French position, but right now, uh, I'm not aware of any response to the Spanish. And this is giving us a bit of a crisis not only to continue the program we have, but to remediate the situation that you're bringing to our attention. Uh, but be that as it may, I would like to ask the board to support our efforts to find something and kind of do it in a general way to enable the superintendent to uh, work with staff to, uh, to go forward and um, uh, whether it's, if we can find somebody for one or two class periods that uh, would help you, uh, I would be willing to suggest that to the board. I just don't have any specifics. Uh, and I'm not sure what we're going to find for staffing. Unless, uh, perhaps you'd like to ask questions. I see we have the, just about the entire staff here. So I think maybe they, they're here because they want to say something. And I invite all of them or a spokesperson. Or, But uh, just because people might not know what the feeling of the board is on this, how about if I try a motion and then open it to discussion so that people will have a, an idea of what we're thinking of? Is that okay? Um, I move that we uh, ask the superintendent um, to explore the possibilities to find a means to alleviate the present situation uh, in the foreign language. Uh, department and also that we ask for a study of what trends are presenting themselves and what proposals uh, there are to accommodate the FLESS students advancing through the program and to report back at the January school board meeting. I'll second that. Do, do you mean January or December? I thought I meant January, but I might have meant December. <laughs> 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 Which one works? <laughs> I think it was Enero, she said, wasn't it? No, I don't. <laughs> Anybody have any questions or comments, Carla? Is the middle school position full-time, the one that's been advertised? Is that for a full-time position? It's an eight-tenths position. Eight-tenths. Almost full-time, but not quite. And then the high school needs a two-fifth. That's right. So my original hope was that we could hire a full-time person, person and them. find some way of sharing staff. Um, schedules make that almost impossible. Um, I'll, however, one of the things that I'm concerned about is finding a 
qualified person, number one. Number two, what kind of uh, possibilities would, would that, could we work anything out if we found a good person who could work full time and so on? I mean, I'm not sure what, what the possibilities are. Um, I'd and, like, we have a lot of talent here tonight. Uh, they didn't leap forward when invited a minute ago, but I'd like to hear uh, from some of you how, uh, how we can go about recruiting good teachers for this program or whatever support you need from us. When we formed the pilot program some, several years ago, we clearly indicated that we would need this kind of staffing. It was projected that we should have two-fifths of teachers per year starting this year in order to alleviate the crowding. So just for those of you who may be new, we, we knew this would happen and we're not surprised and it's not something I, I just want the uh, staff here that's represented, uh, there might have been a projection several years ago that we were going to need this increased staff, but during last year's budget, this request was not presented, and I just think that that's important that you know that. All right. I just want you to know, Judy, as finance chair last year, though, uh, it was not presented to the school board. Just so you'll know. I have a concern about, um, actually a question, not a concern, about Rick's um, memo to Connie. And it has to do with a particular paragraph. Previous courses in the high school Spanish have left some students less well prepared for the next level of Spanish. This has resulted in more than the average number changing to a different or lower level. Ten students who were recommended for level three opted for level 2A. Eight of those are high school students who passed level two last year and are now in level 2A, while two freshmen entered the level lower level 2A class. I guess I'm asking, since school has started, have children, have students opted to, to drop to a lower level? And is this impacting certain um, teachers' uh, workloads? Some of that has occurred since school began. Some of it happened as early as last May. Excuse me, could you come up to the mic? I I think it's probably hard for people at home to hear you. Sorry. Some of the changes in level where students who are dropping from 3 to 2A or from, from 2 back to 1 occurred even before school began. It happened last spring. Um, but a number of them happened in the fall. And some of them were the first day, the second day of school. The students, um, and after the first day of class, said, I don't belong here and switched to the lower level. I, I just wonder with the growing number of students that are coming, not just in the language and languages, but total student population, are we going to be really allow a lot of this lowering? And, you know, I, have a, I have a concern. You know, it creates certain burdens. 
And we may have to set up, you know, essentially a We have a real it. concern for it as well, especially where we have established a program with the students coming out of eighth grade and they are placed based on, based on proficiency. Those are the only students who, as, as a department, we're looking at and seeing that those are the students who will be placed in 3 or 2A by a test. The others, if they have completed the course, for them to switch levels on their, on their own um, really is, is questionable. I mean, a student cannot go back and repeat Algebra 1 if they've already taken it and get credit. I think, I think personally, I'm speaking for myself and another department, that the same thing should hold true in terms of foreign languages. If they have satisfactorily completed a course, um, then they should either move on to the next one. If they don't feel comfortable there, then perhaps they should consider switching languages or dropping, dropping entirely. No, I agree with you. I think, we, again, we need, we need to look at everything from a system-wide approach. And if, if what's happening in other courses is not being, you know, it's not, we should, I agree, it should be a uniform course. But I, I do feel that this year it was an anomaly. And it, it was a result of, certain students from last year not really being being as adequately prepared as they should have. And I don't anticipate with current staffing that that will reoccur. No, I can understand that. But I, th I think it's a policy that we need to look at. Either, either it's administrative procedure or it's a school policy. I'm not sure which. I think that one of the things that uh, uh, that is you know, on the table to as part of the motion is to uh, continue to offer some means of helping this department to um, to advise us through the budget process as well as in other ways just exactly what's going on here I mean this is a pretty ambitious vision uh, one that w I think you have a lot of support right here from uh, all of us but at the same time the uh, those questions about um, can you just take five years of a language but basically learn three years of, that amounts to three years of study. I mean, how do we level this so that more students learn more language? Uh, and I think it's, I, th I think you're dealing with a very, very uh, interesting but difficult issue we want to get as part of this budget process. We need to get back to whatever you thought was going to go on and then modify what you thought was going to go on with the FLESS program whenever you set it up four or five years ago. and. Be realistic about where you are right now. What does that mean? Because clearly you didn't anticipate every single thing that has happened five years ago. Uh, so we need to have an update in that original plan and so on. Um, having said as much, I'm concerned about getting staffing, so I hope you will help us with it. Any other comments? I, I would just add that this issue, again, speaks to um, something uh, some of us talked about last spring, and that is um, that it would be good to establish some kind of informal budget talks between the school board and the individual schools so we could, you know, not just have something presented to us that we don't know all the history behind it, but we could get in and um, talk to people in the schools say a little bit about what we see our goals as here, what your needs are, so it's more of a give and take process instead of getting down to that final wire, having a few meetings and uh, be done with it. Because I think that there maybe was a little misunderstanding about, you know, how, why the staffing is the way it is, but again, like so often is the case, this is a much more complicated issue than just a few you know, too, few too many kids here. We may have kids not taking the right courses or we're being too accommodating or, or there's other things going on and I think it would be helpful to talk about those. But in the meantime, you, you have a definite issue here that, that we need to address. Okay, are we ready to vote? We need a second. second. We don't have the second, okay. I thought we, we did, thought we did have the it. second. <laughs> we did. Mm -hmm. See, this time oh, I was on top. <laughs> Okay, all in favor? 7 0. Thank you. Now we just have to find qualified Somebody. people. Um, okay, the last uh, request on here is you have, I think, a brief memo on additional support for middle school boys basketball program. And I'm looking for my copy. Here it is. Okay. Um, 
this falls in the nature of once again having a lot of people interested in doing something I think it does boil down to a almost a philosophy issue this doesn't happen to be a big money issue here but it is one that we want to be clear about um, the additional support is apparently dealing with the fact that you anticipate more students and I guess Andy will ask you to well again that. you know under one of my my many duties as the athletic director in the middle school um, along with the budget and creating all the the opportunities that we have for the kids I I we, we right under the banner of the opportunity for everyone to play and we form these B teams which gives a lot of the kids who are not up to the level of everyone else the ability to play and to learn the basics and work work up from there um, and what happened this year with with the uh, with the basketball we had originally 35 um, 50 55 kids who tried out for the seventh and eighth grade teams we have a seventh grade team and an eighth grade team that gave us uh, uh, after the the teams were made it gave us approximately 27 kids who uh, would be on the B team and as a, if anyone knows about basketball the B the uh, the numbers are very very critical that we keep them as low as possible 12 to 15 uh, one of our ideas were, was to split this team in half and um, create two B teams um, the, co the B team coaches which are split between Bob Dahl and Chris Carlisle would um, be responsible for these these two teams what we're asking for is an additional person who could help uh, run some practices uh, when the other B team may be away. Um, they could also help at home games um, when they're going to be playing at home. Uh, you can see that we have it calculated out that they'd be responsible for around 12 practices um, and games. Uh, it comes out to two hours, so we're asking for an additional uh, $204 to help support uh, the B team. Uh, the numbers of kids is just it's it's just a credit to to the fact that we let everyone play um, we've also added four more kids who have been interested who have come up with an interest to to come out and play on the B team not interested in playing for the A teams but interested in playing for the B team because they know that it's um, a place where they're going to learn more about the sport uh, versus being highly competitive uh, I don't want to say highly competitive, but um, as competitive as the others. Um, and we're going to have to, sometime, uh, Nancy and I are going to have to talk about that, and we're going to have to say no more, just because, you know, the kids are just coming out because they see that it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, so, so we're just asking for the extra $204 um, for that extra staffing person who may be just a, a teacher at school that can help out in in the gym when uh, we have so many kids and so many activities going on. I just um, think that it's important if you, we take a look at our enrollments that we have to recognize the fact that our middle school is having increasing enrollments. And this is one of the adjustments we're going to have to make because still only five basketball players could be on the court at a time. And the most reasonable number is 13 to 15. And mm -hmm. 12 would be ideal. Yep. Um, so I just think that this is part of the fact that the middle school is growing and we have to recognize it. Charlie? Uh, you need to explain to us what their schedule would be. I okay. I understand the on the, it, it is kind of confusing. On the, on the second page um, where you see practices A and B, the one would be the A team, one would be the B team. Um, and as you go down through where it says scrimmages and games, those are the dates that the seventh and eighth grade teams are away. So those are open dates that most uh, other schools, uh, like right now, we have scheduled Greeley in uh, when we're at when the A teams are at Greeley, uh, when the seventh and eighth grade teams are at Greeley, our B teams will play Greeley at home. So those are open dates where the facility, where the gymnasium is available for strictly B team activities. Um, and all the others are times that would be 
split with the seventh and eighth grade teams. Uh, like November 22nd would be A team's practice. The A team, which is part of the B team. Because a lot of times we consider the seventh grade as an A team and a B team. It's confusing. But uh, the number of middle schools that we play, what number of those schools have B teams? They have such enrollments or participation that they have B teams. Right, right now, there's probably about 50% about of the schools that we play have B teams. The rest of them have eliminated their no cut policies. They have a strict cut policy now in a lot of the, the schools that we that we participate in. We have, an, we have two divisions um, in our leagues. It's like an inland and uh, a shore division. The shore division has more B teams than the inland division. So we're going to be able to pick up, like uh, we don't play Yarmouth in the regular seventh and eighth grade, but we've already been able to pick up Yarmouth as B teams. Um, Holy Cross is another one that usually is very, very open to uh, coming out and playing us on a B team schedule. Uh, so right now, it, it's endless, uh, the schools that we can look at. Memorial, Mahoney, Lincoln, uh, King Jr., those schools now are looking at the fact that they have so many kids coming out that they're forming these extra teams too. So each season, it is just getting on the phone and calling all the athletic directors and finding out who um, has that many people playing that we can set up a B team. Okay. One more clarification. We yep. just approved shared positions for 7th grade boys basketball and 7th and 8th grade B team boys basketball and two yep. people. Mm -hmm. That means two people are splitting one coaching position or it looks to me like... They are, they are splitting two coaching positions. They are splitting the 7th grade position, which is the seventh grade team, which is right now there's 15 people on that team, and they are splitting the B team position. Now, um, there's, you know, there's going to be more of Bobby Dahl, Bob Dahl will be um, really the one person who's going to be working with the B team, not solely, but with Chris, but he's going to be the one who will be traveling with them, um, with that team. It looks like two coaches hand handling three teams. They, they, no, well, they will be hand There will never be three teams playing at the same time. Um, so th th there might be two teams playing at the same time, which would mean that Chris Carlisle would go with the seventh grade team and coach them, and Bob Dahl would stay with the B team and coach them at home because there will be overlaps where whenever the teams are away, there will be um, games going on at home. Okay. Now I understand why you need someone to help with practices. Yeah. Rosemary. A Andy, I'm sure it's accounted for somewhere. I just didn't see it in this. Um, with the change from Joe Doan in the girls, he's not coaching this year? That's correct. Is there a savings there that offsets this 204, or has that already been accounted for? I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not, I, have, I have not looked at that. We haven't looked into that because uh, he would be... His stipend yeah, would, would have been greater than, than the new person coming in, yes. So it, this might not be 204 additional? We didn't even, I didn't even look into that. The wisdom of the board comes through again. Sorry. <laughs> I should have asked you... No, that, that, no, that's... that's, that's you know, I, I did not look into that at all. That's, that's a great point. I, I, there is some play there. Oh, sorry. Well, I, I don't think it makes or breaks this um, decision, but I just think that there is some money there that will help so that we can improve the expenditure without it giving a dollar amount, if that's what we do. Charlie? Just for clarification, I believe it's a base rate per hour, no matter what sport you teach. And it all involves the number of hours that you, that's allocated to that particular sport. So 
Yeah, it, so those it, are the hours allocated to the seventh grade girls. It, it is basketball. They, I can't see those hours being cut, so the stipend wouldn't be cut. No, there, there, there's a, a four-step process for the coaches. Um, there's, I believe, Joe Doan would have probably been on the 100 percent, where he'd be receiving 100 percent of the stipend amount. New coaches coming in um, get, I believe, it's an 80 percent of that stipend amount. Um, so there's a, a rank that coaches go on according to ability and expertise in the, and the, the years coached. Okay. I, I think I need to speak to the athletic director as the, as the spokesperson for the teachers' negotiations. I, that's something I was not aware of. Carla? Again, for my own education, <laughs> if the question of the stipend hadn't come up and we were to vote for something like this, where does this money come from? We just say, yes, you can have this $204. Well, one of the ways in which this kind of thing comes about is just exactly what they're talking about here, that the budget was built with the assumption of certain assumptions about the level of experience in coaching, although as it, it says here, 24 hours times the basic rate of 850, and that's where the 204 comes from. The other thing is, is that we look at the entire athletic budget, the supply count, uh, the various other kinds of things that go to support the, the team sports in general. We don't charge for middle school for the most part. I guess maybe we might occasionally, but the, um, so you don't have that particular <coughs> activity fund, but the um, it, there are. Uh, I have seen, for instance, uh, Nancy's been in here with uh, requests that have, frankly, been funded by the student council. Uh, we didn't ask them for that right now. We would sit down, and if you d decide to go with this, uh, in the spirit of supporting the no cut policy, we will look at the budget and find um, some place where we can take it. Um, but that is something that we have done in the past is when we can't find it out of the regular budget. And it is a uh, request that comes in during the school year when the budget is already there. Uh, we have turned to some of the student activity funds. Well, the budget itself is a, is a dynamic uh, that, that almost never ends. We start about now working on the budget for next year. And uh, we all make our very best estimates as to how many students there are going to be and how many in the sports and how many in Spanish. And we set the budget. Uh, it never works out that way. And so on a regular basis, uh, we will uh, uh, have to adjust. And we'll find that some items are up and some are down. And uh, we just hope that all the ups and all the downs are no larger than the $204 <laughs> we're talking about this evening. Uh, if it's uh, you know, $20,400, then it's a real problem uh, in all likelihood if it's, a, it's an extra expenditure. But, uh, you know, you'll see this on a regular basis that we'll, uh, it's one of the reasons the Finance Committee meets, I guess. I put another plug for the Finance Committee. We look at that every month to see where we are. Andy, can I just ask you, would there be any utility at all in doing a survey of the kids the spring before, so I, I know it wouldn't be. We did this. Uh, approaching 100%. Nancy, Nancy, and I set up a uh, a flyer that went out uh, two years ago. Uh, I believe it was two years ago, just to see the support for our B teams, and that is why last year we came to you and asked for additional B team coaches for all of our activities because of the influx of this uh, larger class coming through. The biggest problem is that is during this season. Um, when we get into the next season, which um, everyone, ha the girls basketball season starts January 10th. And January 10th, they, are, they have girls basketball, they have swimming, and they have indoor track now. They have those three for everyone to play off of. Right now, there's no other alternative for the kids to do other than, than basketball. So all the kids, they want to be involved. And uh, this is why we've always had this problem here. Last year, that we had this with the girls, but we didn't have the number influx last, last year. We did have our B team with the girls, and when the uh, boys came later on, we did have one there also. But usually, this is the only time. Um, Nancy and I are sitting down each after each season and really going over the season because we're looking at a lot of other communities that are looking at 
the no-cut policy because it is an expensive, you know, it's not that expensive when you look at the, the bottom line for offering things for the kids to do. Um, so we're trying to, after this year, we should be able to come out with a real um, idea of what we can offer them um, so they can be involved all the time because they want to be there. And, you know, and it's tough. You know, as Nancy knows that she's after me all the time because the kids are all over the place because they're waiting for practice to start and they can't get in the gym for another 10 minutes and they just, they're dying to get in there. Well, I'm glad they're so enthusiastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's they're good. trying to get into the classrooms just as hard. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> um, I, I, do, I do think it's a good idea for, for you to continue looking at the no-cut policy. Mm -hmm. I don't think you're going to get any pressure from us, but it's, you know, it's good to know what's going on out there and why it's going on. Do these kids also have opportunities through community services? They don't. To, community so, community services like just goes up to the sixth, sixth grade. grade. And Is there uh, a, do you know if there's a particular reason why that's no so, facilities? Why it stops? Just. So when we have a new elementary <laughs> school gym, then maybe we can look at. Connie that. and I have already okay. been discussing that one. Yes. Something for the future. Then. Yeah. Sure. Have you looked at intramural? That was that was the one that Nancy and I have been been playing with quite a bit, and we have a proposal. We started with a proposal on the intramural, um, and this this is actually a combination of intramural and interscholastic. Um, the intramural that I drew up would have been uh, we would have been coming to you asking for over six hundred dollars because of the uh, supervision of the kids before they can get into the gym and after they can get into the, after getting out of the gym before the bus goes. Um, and the fact that we really either be going out and asking for parent volunteers or asking for uh, some of the teachers to help out with the, with the different teams. We looked at splitting into four teams, playing a round robin type format and then taking groups to different uh, communities. This seemed like a less expensive approach for this year. Um, it will give us a year to really sit down and, and put all the facts in black and white and really play with the different um, alternatives we have. Um, with the numbers that we have now, 30, about 32 kids, when one group is away, the other group we can split into two teams and play an intramural type um, games with them just to see how they they like that type of an atmosphere too. So we are playing with that idea. And I like that. I, I think Nancy and I both like that idea, but I think doing it right now would have been tough to, to uh, administer it. So we, I'd like to lay off for maybe a year and, and put all the pieces together. Rosemary? If there's no other discussion. I think not. Um, I move that we uh, authorize the additional support for the middle school boys basketball program and I would also ask for a, a supplemental financial breakdown from the business manager of exactly what that figure is for the next finance committee meeting. Second motion. Any discussion? All in favor? 7-0. Thank you. Okay, the final item is consideration of a request by the superintendent, superintendent to enter executive session for the purpose of discussing negotiations. So moved. <laughs> Second. 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 Any discussion? All in favor? You're learning, Charlie. I'm getting that so moved.